In this video, we're going to look at the scale of black holes in the universe, but we're going to do it in a way that's a little unusual. To do these things, justice. First, we need something big to compare them with. So let's use our solar system. We're going to make a scale model of our solar system somewhere where we can get a good sense of that scale, like here in Manhattan, New York. The first thing we need for our scale model is Earth. And we're going to make it the size of a grape here. If the Earth is a grape, the Sun is the size of a large elephant. It's pretty huge, but this is a little too close. We need to put it 400 meters or four football pitches away. Let's add in the other planets of our solar system here in New York. There's giant Jupiter there. It's about the size of a beach ball. The last major planet is Neptune. It's out beyond the Statue of Liberty, 11 kilometers away from the sun. It's about the size of a melon. You can see why it's difficult to see Neptune. We're on a grape trying to look at a melon in the dark, almost 11 kilometers away. But now that we've got our scale sorted out, how big is the smallest naturally occurring black hole compared with the solar system? Well, it would be, actually, it would be just this big, smaller than a fine grain of sand. Black holes are tiny. It's obviously much smaller than the Earth. It's about the same size as the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs, which is also surprisingly small. Black holes can be smaller than asteroids. Isn't that crazy? Now you might think, well, that's a special tiny black hole that doesn't have much in it, but it's not. That grain of sand started out as this, an O-type star, 10 times wider than the sun and 35 times the mass, the size of a large hot air balloon on our Earth grape scale. When a huge star like this reaches the end of its life, it explodes as a supernova. I've sped it up here a lot. Most of the star bursts outwards, forming a huge cloud of gas and dust, thousands of times bigger than our solar system. But it leaves behind a core of iron and nickel, a little smaller than our sun, but with more than two times the mass. And the iron and nickel atoms just aren't strong enough to resist the crush of their own gravity. It collapses and atoms are so empty, they almost seem to disappear when they're crushed. They are crunched down to a clump of neutrons called a neutron star. It's so dense, you can see it bend light around it. If it's as heavy as 2.2 suns or more, as it is in this case, even the neutrons aren't strong enough to fight their own gravity. So it collapses one more time to form a black hole. The mass of more than two suns is now inside a black sphere just 13 kilometers across. Smaller than a fine grain of sand on this Earth grape scale. But black holes aren't quite what they seem. Now, just to get close up with a black hole for a second, a black hole is two things. There is something in the middle called a singularity and a black sphere around it called the event horizon. Let's chop it in half for a moment. Basically, inside the black hole, the singularity is the crushed core of the star. The exact size of the singularity is still a bit of a mystery because it breaks our current theories of the universe. It may have no dimensions, just a dot, or it may just be incredibly small. We can describe the world outside the event horizon very precisely, but for now at least, the singularity requires improvements to our understanding of physics to fully define. It doesn't help that we will never see it. This is because this crushed star has so much mass that it reaches out with its gravity and pulls everything nearby in, including light, creating this black sphere around it, the event horizon. It's a cloak of blackness that we think is probably just empty. It just marks the point of absolutely no return for anything but you're not simply safe outside it. Small black holes in particular have something called a gravitational gradient. All that means is when you get close, you will inevitably be turned into spaghetti. Seriously, 
you are pulled much harder at the front of your body than at the back and it will just stretch you out more and more the closer you get to it. It's called spaghettification. With really big black holes, that doesn't happen until you're inside the event horizon. But whether it's inside or outside, you can't avoid gravity when you get close to the singularity. You will inevitably be ripped to shreds very quickly. I often hear people say they'd like to fall into a black hole just to see what's inside but I wouldn't recommend it. If you're lucky and it's a huge black hole and you can avoid all the other matter falling in with you at incredible speeds, you'd pass the event horizon and you'd likely momentarily see only darkness in the direction of the singularity, not be able to tell anyone about it and a fraction of a second later, you'd be instantly turned into spaghetti. So this is the theoretically smallest black hole we can have, but the smallest we found is a little bigger and likely around 6.3 solar masses in weight. It's the size of a fine grain of sand. If you thought it was hard to find a melon-sized Neptune, imagine trying to see an absolutely black grain of sand in the blackness of space way outside the solar system. We have to look for either its immense gravitational effect on things, its ability to bend light around it, or the incredibly intense light given off when things fall inside them. So why have I made this huge scale model of the solar system if black holes are the size of grains of sand? Well, it's because black holes don't just like eating spaghetti, they like eating stars too. So to understand the next bit, we need to talk about galaxies briefly. We live in a galaxy, the Milky Way, about here. We're still learning a lot about how galaxies form, but in the early stages, there's a lot of matter and young stars in the center of this mass. And that means big stars absorbing each other and becoming black holes. In fact, there's likely to be black holes absorbing other black holes, making these huge black holes growing bigger and bigger, eating more stars and matter and black holes. Eventually, only one wins, and that winner is a supermassive black hole. They're naturally right in the middle of the galaxy. We now believe there's one at the center of almost every galaxy. We have one at the center of ours. We've even taken an image of it. It's called Sagittarius A star, and it is huge. Our smallest black hole has a mass of a little over two suns, while Sagittarius A star has a mass of 4.3 million suns, which is ridiculous. Now the reason it has this bright ring around it is because it's currently eating a star. This is the gas of that star being ripped away and accelerated to incredible speeds and temperature before being pulled into the event horizon. It's a flat ring of material, but it looks like it's above and below it too because the black hole bends the light around it. It's an optical illusion. So how big is this thing on my solar system scale if it's got 4.3 million suns in it? Well, black holes are a bit underwhelming in terms of scale because they crush big things into tiny things. What's impressive really is their crushing ability and how much they can fit inside them. So if I just showed you its size, I don't think I'd be doing it justice. So I thought the most interesting way to visualize a 4.3 million solar mass black hole would be to watch one grow by feeding it 4.3 million suns. So here they are. This ridiculous amphitheater of light is what 4.3 million suns look like on this scale. I've had to make this cap of stars 50 kilometers in diameter just so we can see the individual stars. I've put that grain of sand sized black hole where my hand is here, close to our own sun. So that will be the first one to be eaten. This is normally how stars are absorbed. They're stripped of their matter, forming this accretion disk. We're going to have to speed this up in this crude simulation. In reality, the process to gain so much mass probably takes hundreds of millions of years. But by actually seeing the equivalent mass that this black hole has eaten, it should hopefully give us a better sense of scale of just how massive Sagittarius A star really is. When I first started this video, I knew the numbers, but I couldn't wait to see this, to actually see 
what 4.3 million really means. You can fit more than a million Earths in the sun, and each one of these dots is a sun in this almost endless sea of light. It should also be noted that the sun is actually an unusually heavy star. It's heavier than 95% of the stars in the universe. So 4.3 million suns of mass is even more incredible. As Sagittarius A star keeps absorbing stars, it will eventually reach 70 meters in diameter on this scale. About 20 times wider than one sun, but containing the mass of all of these. That's actually not very big at all. It's just the size of a big star. It wouldn't reach the planet Mercury, and for instance, it's a lot smaller than the star Betelgeuse in the constellation of Orion. So if you already knew there was a supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy, you might have envisaged this terrifying, huge object slowly sucking up the galaxy. But it's not. It's this magnificent black star size object of incredible power. Just don't get too close to it and you'll be fine. There are even bigger supermassive black holes too. The largest we've found so far is inside a quasar called TOM618. A quasar is an incredibly bright center of a galaxy. It's like a lighthouse, and quasars are the brightest thing in the entire universe. They're powered by an ultra-massive black hole, accelerating matter to incredible speeds and temperature, blasting out energy from the black hole's accretion disk, forming two jets of plasma bursting out of the poles of the black hole. The TOM618 black hole is even bigger than 70 meters because it has more solar masses in. So let's feed it those extra suns and let's have it grow from the Sagittarius A star sized black hole to the size of TOM618. So on a scale where the Earth is the size of a grape, the sun is the size of an elephant, and the smallest black hole is the size of a fine grain of sand. The black hole in TOM618 is about 650 kilometers or 400 miles in diameter. That's 27 times the diameter of the solar system out to Neptune. It has the mass of 41 billion suns. This single black hole has more mass than our entire galaxy, the Milky Way. We think of black holes as star eaters, but really, they're galaxy eaters. Thank you for watching my video on the scale of black holes. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned a little about these crazy little star crushers. I'll be doing more on them in another video as there's a few things I didn't touch on. If you haven't seen my other videos, there's a short playlist here if you are enjoying them, do please feel free to like and subscribe, ring the bell, etc. It's just me making these videos and I hope to make them full time at some point. So any support is greatly appreciated. And on that point, if you'd like to really support me further, I've got a Patreon link in the description where you can join my little crew of astronauts here. They are awesome. T-shirts also available now too. shameless self-promotion time. Otherwise, thanks again everyone for all the incredibly kind comments on my videos. I love making them and I love to hear your comments and suggestions. If you've got any questions on space and science and the universe, do please feel free to ask me in the comments too. I always love to chat about that stuff whenever I have the time. Cheers.